welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Why don't you come on in? Make yourself at home. We got plenty of room aboard the biggest and deadliest star destroyer, baby. I know! I know! You, you guys are feeling the emptiness in your soul. You're waiting for that road ahead. I know, even Gary's waiting. We're waiting and waiting and waiting. But one day, the road ahead will grace us. I promise you. But in the meantime, we don't have time to sit here and be sad. So we got to get to it. And I want to talk about something that has drastically made an improvement in my grand arena performance. And that's all because of the comeuppance. We're doing a little bit of like a, a, a one month-ish review of the comeuppance. My experience of how it's doing on defense. And more importantly for me, how it's actually kicking some serious butt on offense. So why don't we come on over? Let me show you. What I got cooking in the kitchen, y'all. So, with the comeuppance, I want to make it entirely clear. Straight from the get-go. It doesn't seem like this is a tie defender. It's no Iden. It's no Bad Batch Marauder. But not every new ship needs to be so. The comeuppance, from my experience so far, has done just enough to keep the Radis fleet relevant. Now, I feel like this is a little bit late to the party. I think not as people are gonna be interested in the type power to come up with this bringing. If this was maybe brought like, be, instead of the <laughs> the resistance bomber a couple years ago, when the tie, when we had the, the tie echelon be brought to the finalizer, this I think would have been a little bit more pressing news for people to, get, to garner interest. But what it's done for me personally, it's, it's just mathematically increased my overall banner scores, and at times, it's dropping some people's banners when it's on defense. The most important thing that we're noticing with the comeuppance is actually on defense. The AI is actually pretty smart. It's bringing out the comeuppance as the first reinforcement. So long as there's no reinforcements that just have a natural high priority. Like, I one time put Clone Sarge with the comeuppance, and Clone Sarge came out first. That come up and said, as long as you don't put units that have a high reinforcement priority, it seems like the AI is gonna bring out the comeuppance. And once this comes out, you clench your cheeks if you see it come out. Cause this thing will bring out some serious damage. And I'm noticing it can cause malevolence to struggle, finalizer struggle, and it kind of seems like you might, if you want to play it safer, bring out a ship that might be a little bit better, like maybe a Chimera fleet, maybe a negotiator fleet, something along that line, or you just overkill with the executor and call it a day and let me show you the lineup that i've been personally enjoying this is kind of the one that i like it doesn't really matter i just like to have ray and poe out from the get-go because when i bring in that come up and turn one reinforcement i need ray to just nuke the entire enemy team so let me do this i want to show you some actual gameplay of it in the wild and grand arena because fleet arena testing doesn't always show the full entire picture so gary you got the footage yeah let's roll it all right so I'm going to show a couple things. I want the first few battles. I want to show the Separatist and the Finalizer going up against uh, the Radis Flea. And this is my gameplay using up against them. And now the one thing, I, it kind of makes me a little sketchy. When I'm bringing that Malevolent Fleet, which used to be like a bread and butter, pretty simple counter up against Holdo. It's going to make me think twice <laughs> doing this moving forward. Because man, once that comeuppance comes out and it brings all that extra damage... I barely skirted out of these battles by the hairs of my chinny chin chin. It really makes the damage a lot scarier when that comeuppance comes out. And unfortunately, it doesn't pull off the perfect combo. We'll show the perfect combo when we use it on the offensive side of things. But again, if you put the comeuppance and hold them on defense, it's not going to be a chimera. It's not going to be a negotiator marauder. I think it's very clear it's not that as the case of the fact. But what it's doing, if someone does want to try to maybe use their bigger fleets with other things and they have comeuppance and they try to do like a typical finalizer or a malevolence count, which is what we are used to doing beforehand, they might be bled out of banners. I lost like 10 plus banners just doing this battle with Separatist versus Holdo coming close to a loss. Now, I've also ran this battle accidentally finalizer versus Holdo on my free to play account. I wasn't expecting my opponent to have a resistance with the comeuppance. I didn't check. I'm like, oh, this is an easy counter. All of a sudden, that comeuppance comes out. You start clenching, like, ooh, baby, this could be in, in for a wild ride. Surprisingly enough, I still made it out with relatively decent banners in place. So, by no means am I saying Holdo's eliminating the malevolence, it's eliminating the fine lines. But when I'm looking at data and personal experience, we are seeing that. When you throw in the come up into the reinforcements, you are seeing there is a noticeable change in banners and success rates when you bring those other fleets up against Holdo. So 
materially this has made a very substantial impact just from a defensive standpoint and the thing that really just impresses it reiterate it one more time is the fact that the ai is actually fairly smart and it'll bring out the comeuppance first reinforced because if this thing's second reinforced it's doing no good holdo generally rarely gets to a second good reinforcement but when the comeuppance is coming out early enough it makes a really big impact so it's good to see it works like that unfortunately on offense when you hit auto it doesn't do that but some units they act differently on auto on offense and when it's on defense take supreme to kyle ren for example on auto offense he doesn't do the poke right right away but on defense he does the right combo so this is definitely one of those units that does the combo correctly when it's on defense so it's good to know but what the thing is that really improved my gameplay and i think it's going to improve a lot of your gameplay if you do utilize this ship i've been enjoying this quite a lot on offense where normally uh, the way i play where i go very heavy defense and i usually get pretty good banners <laughs> There's, uh, so once in a while some weird stuff happens but generally like leviathan i'm getting 70 plus banners on executor i'm getting 70 plus banners and 7 throw a malevolence fleet and generally i would do a separatist you know malevolence mirror match brutal banners and i'll lose like 10 banners i'll instead of 70 banner wins it'll be like something 60 wise you know 63 64 but the holdo fleet has just materially improved my banner game on ships when it comes to these malevolences that are on defense because the second i'm bringing out that come up and watch these plays here so basically when you do that swarm attack of zori it's almost like you know an insta kill for whatever target you're going at but if you could time it out where ray comes in you can nuke the entire team and now we're getting 73 banners on malevolence so for me and i've already had ships fairly locked in if i can improve my ship game that's already pretty well by another 10 banners that will make a big difference in the ship game. We'll show another one. This one was maybe a little bit less efficient, but nonetheless, we get in there. I've been using the bomber a little bit more. The biggest weakness, the, the, the consensus is, the tank is the worst part about this fleet. So that's why I said you don't need the tank in the starting slot. You can just go with the triple, you know, resist the attackers, the X-Wing, Poe, and Ray. But oftentimes I'm using the, I'm using the, the bomber to make sure that, you know, Ray or Poe doesn't die. So it does its job. But by far, the consensus, the bomber is the probably the weakest tank in the game. It's unfortunate to say, it, you know, it does its job a little bit, but not quite as well. But nonetheless, when eventually, whenever we do it, get that comeuppance in, it comes in. And again, it's basically game over. You do an explosive, powerful swarm attack, almost nuking whatever you're trying to take down. Again, it feels like the Zori you're used to in the character side of things. And then Ray comes in, nukes everyone out. And again, pretty solid banners at the end of the day. So... We'll have to see you if there's maybe a bigger implication here, but I can safely tell you I'm not seeing resistance, comeuppance, make the needle move much in territories where there's less ships involved. I just haven't really seen it. But in Grand Arena, with three fleets on defense, you're going to need three on offense, and banner efficiency is incredibly important for a play style like mine. I found myself getting some good uses out of the comeuppance, getting me some solid banners up against especially the Separatist lineup. Other fleets, I don't know how confident I would use it up against. Like, I don't know if I would use this up against Executor. I have won a few Executor matches, but it's, it doesn't feel as good as Marauder. doesn't feel as good as TIE Defender. You know, Negotiator also could be a little tricky with all the dazes and the massive explosive uh, plays that Kenobi has in the opening. Not sure if I would do that or use it up against Profanity unless I was in a high risk scenario. But at the end of the day, is it better? It has, and it just, it's made my banner count just so much better inside of Grand Arena. So that's, I think it's something interesting to take down. Not everything's gonna be, as we said, a Marauder, a TIE Defender, but it could be a decent boost that's materially better. And it's making my gameplay and my score is better in Grand Arena. It's, you know, there's gonna be a day where those extra 10 banners using the comeuppance over a Malevolent Spear match will make a difference. So that's gonna be kind of our one month-ish review of the come up as now i know it's been kind of a slower part of a uh, galaxy it's definitely i feel like compared to others definitely a little bit slower in this regard but it's really given us time to kind of sit down and evaluate and reflect on how are these units that we are getting sparingly doing inside of star wars galaxy who knows maybe there's gonna be a bigger future sometime down the road that we are just gonna have to wait and see but i digress thank you so much for stopping by hopefully you enjoyed your time here and more 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 importantly always remember how it's great to be in the empire today oh it's great to be in the empire today the sun never sets